The world watched in horror as the Syrian regime used chemical weapons against its own population. The mighty and unstoppable Tomahawk missile pierced through their airspace to obliterate the airbases where the attacks were being launched from. The weapon is considered the pioneering technology of non-contact warfare, a powerful naval-based guided cruise missile that has transformed warfare for over three decades, bringing destruction to targets over 1,500 miles away from the launch pad while striking with bullseye precision without endangering the life of U.S. sailors. The Tomahawk effectively transformed submarines from naval weapons to a worldwide threat, allowing American submersibles to target 90% of the world's populations from the safety of the ocean's depths. Its unparalleled technology also allows it to combine terrain elevation data with digital maps and real-time camera inputs to navigate through its course at extremely low altitudes and high speeds, hugging valleys and mountains to avoid radars and anti-missile systems. Still, as groundbreaking as it turned out to be, the Tomahawk's development was so chaotic, it almost didn't see the light of day. Building the Tomahawk The pathway to developing the Tomahawk cruise missile was long and complex. Its concept inception began as early as the 1940s, but American engineers did not have the technology to accomplish what the military needed, and the emergence of the Polaris ballistic missile program led to the project's cancellation. It wouldn't be until the 1970s that technological advances made it possible to revisit the ambitious project. However, the concept faced several other obstacles, as pushing a one-and-a-half-ton projectile out of the ocean and then making it navigate through enemy territory was believed to be an insurmountable feat. In addition, submarines had to surface, take the large fighter jet-looking missile to the deck, fuel it, and then launch it in a long and arduous process that left the vessel wholly exposed. Basically, the American engineers had to figure out how to launch a 1.5-ton rocket from within a submersible without destroying it. The solution was to assemble the missile with different stages of propulsion. Initially, the torpedo technology ejected the projectile with the help of a water jet first. Once outside the water, a second stage would unleash the primary propulsion system as the weapon had cleared the ship. With that design hurdle solved, a new major issue arose. By then, the only way to propel a projectile as heavy as the cruise missile was by using liquid fuel. However, this element was known to be highly volatile, and it would often ignite on its own. For U.S. naval captains, the idea of carrying liquid fuel missiles within their ships was unthinkable, as the risk was just too significant. The alternative was to use solid fuels that offered much more stability and safety, but they were not very potent. A conventional solid fuel like gunpowder would never be able to provide the necessary thrust to lift a massive missile to the altitude needed for cruising. As such, a new kind of solid fuel would have to be developed. Enter Charles Henderson, a brilliant chemist who was tasked with going through the entire periodic table of elements to find a suitable candidate for a brand new solid fuel capable of revolutionizing modern warfare. After months of research, he found the solution in aluminum. When pulverized, the metal became highly combustible, and when used in precise ratios in combination with other elements, it could produce more than enough power to push a 1.5-ton missile from the depths of the sea up to the heavens. Lacking Technology Despite the significant breakthroughs, the Tomahawk continued to face several setbacks in the 1960s, with two significant issues the technology of the time seemed unable to resolve. The first problem had to do with cruising. Once the projectile reached its required altitude, it needed to switch its functions from that of a rocket to that of an aircraft. The idea was that the missile would shed its rocket propulsion system and switch to a conventional jet engine to travel up to 1,500 miles and reach its target. However, jet engines were extremely large, which is why all cruise missile attempts in the 1950s looked more like full-fledged airplanes instead of projectiles. It wouldn't be until the mid-1960s, with the development of the experimental jet belt, that the necessary technology to drastically shrink a jet engine would evolve enough to consider fitting a slim projectile within. By 1973, 
the technology to launch the missile and have it travel the desired distance was finally available, but there was still the significant challenge of smartly navigating the projectile while on course. Numerous navigation concepts had been tested throughout the decades with little success. Fortunately, the engineers eventually found a navigation concept from the 1960s that showed remarkable potential. The idea was used in the SLAM missile, an intercontinental ballistic weapon capable of delivering up to 16 nuclear warheads to the Soviet Union while smartly navigating from one target to the next. The doomsday weapon had been cancelled for fear of transforming the Cold War into an all-out nuclear conflict with the Soviets, but the Tomahawk researchers were able to revisit the idea and implement the system for a new modern weapon. The concept was impressive, and it stemmed from a straightforward idea. Fingerprints. Just like all humans have a unique print on the tips of their fingers, all regions in the world have a unique terrain print of mountains, valleys, rivers, and ground elevations that can be transformed into a unique graphical asset used by a computer to navigate. The Tomahawk was fitted with a rudimentary but specialized computer capable of reading terrain prints and comparing them in real time with input captured by the missile's camera systems. Thus, the missile could smartly correct its course and even tightly hug the terrain to avoid enemy radar or anti-air defenses. With that last technological obstacle overcome, the stage was finally ready for the inception of non-contact warfare, spearheaded by the mighty Tomahawk missile. Evolving Warfare Despite all the advances, the Tomahawk would continue to go through several development upgrades to improve its systems according to the ever-evolving technology of the 1980s and the early 1990s. Initially, there were three types of Tomahawk missiles, an anti-ship version with standard warheads and two land attack versions with either nuclear-armed or conventional warheads enclosed. Today, only the standard non-nuclear version is in use. Still, drastic enhancements have been made to the original design, and today is more precise and more powerful arrangements are developed by Raytheon. Launched from American surface warships and U.S. and Royal Navy submarines, Tomahawk cruise missiles are intended to fly at extremely low altitudes and high subsonic speeds, and are piloted over unique evasive routes by several mission-tailored guidance systems, mainly borrowed from the SLAM missile project. The terrain data is loaded onto the missile, and when the device is in flight, it actively compares the stored map data with radar altimeter information collected. Based on comparison results, the Tomahawk's inertial navigation system is then updated, and the projectile corrects its course in real time. This system is called TURCOM, and it was based on Fingerprint, a technology created in 1964 for the SLAM digital scene matching area correlation. In addition, the missile will use its cameras and sensors to verify that its stored images coincide with the site below, intelligently traversing through enemy terrain without the need for pilots or remote operators. One of a kind. The Tomahawk missile fills a unique role within the U.S. Navy, as it effectively accomplishes the task once performed by conventional saturation bombing while keeping pilots safe from harm. In addition, it is smaller and flies lower than other bulkier cruise missiles, making them harder to detect and intercept. Its newer version goes beyond the groundbreaking SLAM navigation system by smartly combining data from multiple sensors, aircraft, UAVs, satellites, infantry, soldiers, tanks, ships, and digital maps to not only find its target with formidable precision, but also avoid threats while remaining as close to the ground as possible. Tomahawk missiles are approximately 21 feet long, weigh 1.5 tons, and can be deployed from both traditional torpedo tubes and vertical launch tubes on modern submarines and ships. A powerful rocket propulsion ignition takes the missile to its intended altitude. Then the turbojet engine kicks in, and its wings spread, allowing it to reach speeds of 500 miles per hour. Each missile is stored and launched from a pressurized canister that projects it during transportation and storage while also serving as a launch tube. As the projectile reaches its cruising altitude, the missile's wings are unfolded for lift, the air scoop is exposed, and the turbofan engine is employed for flight over water. Once in the air, the missile switches from its GPS navigation system to ground-focused navigation, 
that allows it to tightly hug the terrain at low altitudes and avoid anti-air defenses. During its debut in Operation Desert Storm, the new weapon proved instrumental in bringing a swift end to the war. Production of the missile ramped up after the conflict, and hundreds of tomahawks were used throughout the 1990s. The weapon also proved to be a mighty blow to warfare's conventional methods, as enemy troops could do very little to stop an incoming tomahawk. Meanwhile, the ships that launched them remained miles offshore, entirely out of range of possible counterattacks. The tomahawk has become so influential and its technology so unique that the U.S. has guarded its supply very closely, only allowing the U.K. to buy the decisive weapon in limited quantities. And until Russia unveiled its own intelligent cruise missile, Caliber, in 2015, there was no other missile system like the Tomahawk in the world. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to find more warfare technology content and intriguing historical anecdotes. And look for our other Dark Documentaries channels for more videos published every day. Stay tuned.